Yes, I saw a Mortal Kombat Legends Battle of the Realms, and yes, it was buns. But we'll talk about that later. But for now, the time is come. Eat me, Buttercup. Probably one of the only, not the best Johnny Cage moment in the, in the movie. I actually did like that a lot. Yeah, he's not dead. He somehow comes back in Battle of the Realms. I, and it's not like, oh, that was a random Tarkat and this is the real Baraka. Like, no, they literally explicitly st- like state that that's Baraka. Uh, and he fought Johnny Cage in the first movie. So I don't know how we survived this, but whatever. I'm, I'm not even going to get into that. Toasty. Probably the only time I've heard that used outside the game. because I don't remember it being used anywhere else. <laughs> I know it wasn't used in the, the, the early 90s movies, the 90s movies. It wasn't used in the 2021 movie. I don't think it was in Battle of the Realms. And I don't think it was in Conquest or um, or uh, Defenders of the Realm. So, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, this, it's like the only time. The only time this was referenced was in Battle, uh, the Scorpion's Revenge. That's so, that's so odd. You'd think they would use it a lot more, especially with Scorpions involved. And you would think they would use it when someone gets burned alive. Like, <laughs> like characters get burned alive in in the second movie. I think he gets burned alive in this movie as a character gets burned alive here. So why not use it when someone actually gets burned, not when someone is buried under rubble? Uh, I don't know. I can smell you. Uh. I- Creeping around right now. Just can't see me as I've evolved in disability. Okay, kind of neat to see reptile vision, but uh, reptile, how about this? You were in front of her face. Why not just spit acid in her face and melt her face? And then, she, then she'll be screaming and pull her face off her face. Like, why don't you just do that? Or, I mean, this is like insane levels of plot armor because. Reptile can use the acid spit while he's hit, while he's invisible. So why doesn't he just do that? Like, Reptile is the most broken character in any story. Like, because he could easily do a lot of these things invisible as, 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 as he's invisible, but he doesn't do it. He just... Like, the closest we got to actually him doing that was Mortal Kombat 95 when he actually spit in Luke Cage's face. But it wasn't even acid. It was just, I don't know, burning liquid or something. Something that disoriented him, but not actually burn his face off. You know, but I, they, I don't know. Maybe, maybe someday they'll do something reptile. And they got me in a 2021 movie because he just, he was already, he's, he's dead. He's dead in that movie. He's gone. There ain't no more reptile <laughs> for that. I just wish they just utilized reptile a little more efficiently instead of making him a jobber and everything he's in. Come on! Face me like a man! <sighs> reptile, strong enough to knock on a tree, but not strong enough to take Sonya Blade's head off with a single punch. He can take down that thick ass tree, but not <laughs> can't take on this, this this woman who's who's human, not super powered. He's just a human being. <laughs> He's just having trouble with her though. What's up, nigga? Seriously, reptile does not use enough of his ass, but he could have easily acid spit her right there. <laughs> he just we just stood there, just staring at her. Like, what are you what are you doing? <laughs> Why is Reptile so dumb? Why is Reptile just so stupid in, this, in these movies? That's very nice of that acid spit to not only just hit the gauntlet she was wearing and nothing else, no other part of her arm, but the acid just, while it's being rapid fire, shot out of his mouth somehow. I don't know. I didn't know Reptile can do that. While it's being rapid fire, shot out of his mouth, it's just missing Sonya Blade at every turn. <laughs> Why is this invisible creature being acid spit and giving away his location? <laughs> oh, yeah, that happens in the 2021 movie too. Like reptiles like stripping acid from the ceiling or something. I was like, why does he do that in these in these Nether Realm sort of or Nether Realm esque Mortal Kombat movies? <laughs> Caught you slipping, reptile. <laughs> He just roars the mud right off of him. He just, 
Ah! And then Bud just goes flying off like, what? That was a bizarre looking shot. <laughs> it was just so odd the way that was animated. <laughs> but that, but I'll, I'll allow it. It was just kind of weird as you're like, looking like that for a second. Not so fun now, is it, you cold blooded bastard? Heads up! Kind of a confusing fatality sequence, I will say. Because I'm like, wait, did, she broke his back. He's now back broken, but he's still standing, and he's getting the rip the the garrote around his neck. It's like, I don't know. That was kind of a confusing sequence, but it looks like they combined two different versions, like two different X-rays or something, or they combined an X-ray with another fatality. I don't know, but that's that's all right way to kill a reptile, I guess. By the way, Reptile does not return in Battle of the Realm, so that actually, I guess that was actually Reptile who <laughs> got yeah, killed off in this movie. Fuck with the blade, you're gonna get cut. Okay, that line was kind of cringe, but I liked it. <laughs> That's an interesting detail to have the, um, the spear come out of the back of the wrist rather than the front of the wrist or the palm like it normally does uh well the palm was more from the 95 movie but the back of the the front of the wrist was like it's the typical way you see it happen here is just the back of the wrist so it's like that was interesting it's a neat little detail tell me lin Kuei scum where is sub-zero Die knowing I will kill every last member of the Lin Kuei on this island. Every last one. Okay, that's nice and all, but like, where is Sub Zero doing all of this? Does he not know his men is being killed like one by one, this one random warrior? Bear in mind, Sub Zero doesn't show up again until like the end of this movie, like, or at least like the last. 20 minutes of this movie so he doesn't show for another half an hour in this movie uh or like a half hour in he's gonna show up for another another 25 20 minutes he will he, he'll be back later much later the real sub-zero by the way um but yeah he's just not here he's supposed to be on the island but he's not even aware that his men are being killed by this one guy also, I do like that Scorpion's using his teleportation ability. Something we don't see in a 2021 movie for some reason. He doesn't use it a lot at all. You know? So, I don't know. That's kind of an odd thing when you, you know, you know he can do it. You know, you know this ability he has in, from the game. But in the movie, he just refuses to use it, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Normally, as a joke, I would say she needs no introduction, but literally got no introduction in this movie. So yeah, this is Katana with no context or no nothing. She just showed up in the movie. Uh, she does. She does have a bigger role, slightly bigger role, in uh, Battle of the Realm. She does play a slightly bigger part into the, the story. But other than that, she's pretty much a background character between both movies. She's just really not that important. You are Raiden's chosen one. <laughs> no wonder your realm has lost so many tournaments. <laughs> This coming from the person who lost her realm to Outworld, had emerged with Outworld. Uh, the man who runs Outworld, which is Shao Kahn, came over, killed your father, drove your mom to suicide. Possibly, I don't know, I didn't think I haven't seen her yet in these movies, but possibly had a clone, uh, Tarkatan, half Edenian clone made of her, and now serves the man who fucked your entire life up. Not really a, a own katana. <laughs> Because you're, you're speaking from experience, I guess, right? I mean, case in point, you just now decided to use your fans. <laughs> you went hand-to-hand -hand with the guy instead of using your fans from the fucking start, okay? See? <laughs> That's why you lost your respect to, to Shao Kahn and Outworld. <laughs> nice bit of fast-paced action in that little shot there. Kind of brings me back to MK95 with uh, Scorpion versus Johnny Cage or Reptile versus Luke Kang. 
just constant, just boom, 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 boom. It's like, oh, like they're just going at it and then trying to kill each other. You know, I mean, just, 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 some, just some nuggets in this movie that are pretty good. And there's some shit in here that's pretty stupid. Not even in like a good stupid, but kind of a like annoying stupid kind of way. I'm pretty sure that's a combo in the actual game, the fan rays into that little kick she does. I kind of wish I used the, the fan rays into the square wave punch, which is MK, MK2 and and beyond. Because that's that's a classic. That's a classic like fan made combo into the in Mortal Kombat, which I thought was kind of cool. And it was so popular. In fact, they use it in Defenders of the Realm, I think. It was an episode of Defenders of the Realm where Katana uses that exact move set, that exact like combo move on a on an enemy or something. And I was like, that's kind of a neat little nod to the fans, I guess. You know, like the show may be bad, but it's, it's a nice it's nice that he actually gave him shit enough to, you know, add that little reference there. I take no pleasure in hurting such a worthy foe. But know this. I will do whatever it takes to defend Earthrealm and win this tournament. Then you are a fool. Shao Kahn cannot be defeated. He will take your world and you will bow your knee like countless others before you. I promise you, I will never bow before that madman. I yield. What makes you so sure you will win? Because I have something no one in Outworld has. What? Hope. It's a nice bit of character work here between Katana and, and Liu Kang, and Liu Kang having saying he has hope, and that's what's going to take to beat Shao Kahn and Outworld and all that. And Katana is kind of shocked by that or surprised by that because, uh, so it kind of shows she's not the Shao Kahn loyalist she was in MK9 yet, or she was, or she but she was like MK9. She was a straight up loyalist to Shao Kahn. She in this movie she's kind of showing hints that she's not, she's not fully there. She knows that. You know, she knows the pain of losing a realm, which again makes that her comment about towards Liu Kang about losing tournaments kind of kind of weird. It's like you should know all this, but uh, yeah, it is, they will expand on this relationship, this friend, this this. Uh, they will develop this relationship a little bit more in Defenders uh, Battle of the Realms. I'm gonna have to not make that mistake. Battle of the Realms, Defenders of the Realms. Um, they will expand on that more in, in the sequel. So there's some there's some hints that they're gonna give Katana a little bit more story. They don't give her too much, I don't think, because they they I will get into that a little bit later on. But just just a TLDR with that, they do make mash up like seven different stories, Mortal Kombat stories in the one movie. So it's like Katana's story could have been a bigger part of this movie, but of of um, Battle of the Realms, but it. Kind of was shoved aside because kind of shoved aside because we had Scorpion and Sub Zero and then all that other nonsense. It's like why are we why are we doing this so many so much in one movie? Come on, guys! But yeah, um, I also like that it does end the same way as Mortal Kombat ninety five. Katana just yields and you know to, to allows Liu Kang to win and stuff like that. It's like I mean because the movies. It established that whole thing. They gave Katana uh, and Liu Kang a relationship, and uh, Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade a relationship. All came from that movie, and I mean, movies influence is felt through a lot of these Mortal Kombat properties. So I appreciate that. But um, but yeah, it, it, I do um, I do like that they kind of have that little brief moment together. That's and it sets up the relationship to like later on in the in the in the series well in the next movie in particular get those dicks out fellas <laughs> rule 34 here we come uh, our wiki feet whichever one some somebody somewhere on the internet is masturbating to that shot okay you won't believe this but this isn't some sort of movie this is the real deal maybe a snuff film or something i don't know but i had to fight some uh some, I, I don't even know what it was. I barely got out alive. I can believe that. The fact that Johnny Cage still hasn't got a clue yet is kind of baffling. <laughs> it's like, Johnny, come on. I, like I said, like I've said before, the, the MK9 game, he figured this shit out pretty quickly. <laughs> that this was not real. That this was, uh, that this was real, excuse me. But 
in this movie, he I, he still thinks this is a fucking some sort of movie or something. It's like, Jesus, Johnny. I fear it's only going to get harder from here. Whoa, wait, wait, what's going to get harder? I just fought a walking pair of teeth on the side of a mountain. I'm not Tom Cruise, you know. I act. I leave that stunt shit for the stunt people. Well, so much for Johnny Cage's motivation from the game. In the game, he became part of this tournament because he he wanted to prove he wasn't a fake and a phony with his Hollywood shit. But in this movie, he's like, no, nah, I just this is just good for my career, and I'm I'm not a I'm not a fighter, which he does, you know, contradict that later on in the movie. So I'm just like, wait, what do you mean you leave it to the stunt people? If you can actually do this shit, what does this make you kind of a lazy asshole that just doesn't want to do any of your skills? <laughs> I don't know. But that that line really threw me off because I was like, so you don't fight in this version? <laughs> he does, though, eventually, in both in this movie and in the Battle of the Realm. So, but good God almighty, when I heard that for the first time, I was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Listen, sweetheart, we should get out of here before... Oh, my dick! Fuck balls, no one touches me without permission, you got it? Got it. This is one of like two times Sonya Blade takes Johnny Cage and Dick Kick City, and this is like the only time it's justified. Outside of that, no. Stay behind me. I'll take care of this. What is this, 1950? Step back, Bruce Lee. Bring it, bitch. I know it's a bit of a stretch to say that there's a touch of the racism in that comment from Sonya Blade, but then I realized, wait, she hasn't even seen him fight, so she just assumes. She just assumes. <laughs> whoa, 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 everyone, just chillax, okay? No one needs to fight anyone, especially some guy that just went psycho on a bunch of, uh... Black Dragon. Mercenaries. Assassins. Bad guys. Yeah, those guys. We have to continue. Once Mortal Kombat has been declared, it must be finished. Did you declare Mortal Kombat? Did you? Nope. Well, what about you, Mr... Scorpion. Oh, it's catchy. I like that. Did you declare Mortal Kombat? Good. Good, great, then no one needs to die. Sheesh. I actually love this moment from Johnny Cage. He's like, hey, no one has to die here, okay? No one declared Mortal Kombat. I love Scorpion's reaction to it. He's like, hey, did you declare Mortal Kombat? And Scorpion's like, no, I don't think I did. I was just standing here killing mercenaries who probably likely tried to kill me. You all know, came over here and wanted to fight me. I didn't do nothing. Also, I don't know why Sonya does this little hat thing. I think she does it twice in this movie. I'm not sure. But she does this thing when she covers her face with her hat. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> he already saw your face. Have you tried to hide your face? Scorpion already saw you. So, <laughs> I don't know. I, I maybe someone maybe someone can explain that to me. I know you didn't believe it before, but it's all true. The Elder Gods, the tournament, everything. Emperor Shao Kahn has won nine previous Mortal Kombat tournaments. If he wins the tenth, then what? Then you all die. Great. Just. Great. Yeah, okay. Monsters, magic. This can't be real. Somebody must have slipped something into my drink. I'm hallucinating. Get a grip, Johnny. Yes, please get a grip, Johnny. You can't be skeptical at this point. Like, for Christ. <laughs> like, what, are you, what are you on about, my guy? <laughs> you know, you have to know this is real. You just see, you just fought Baraka and now Scorpion. And now you see Scorpion and with his, you know, thing forehead. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> This island lives in a place between realms. A place set aside specifically for the tournament. Uh-huh. Sure. Sounds great. So, if what Liu Kang says is true, then you're really some sort of god, right? I have been given many names. Well, shoot, Buddha. Snap your fingers, get us home. I am done with psycho monsters and bad food. And by the way, I'll never complain about doing a sequel again in my life. He cannot. Lord Raiden is forbidden from interfering in the tournament. It is a bargain he made to save Earthrealm from being taken over eons ago. Well, that's... that's insane. The fate of the world is being decided by some sort of karate tournament? Are you kidding me? I do like that they explain that Raiden can't get involved in the tournament because of a bargain he made. Because some, some properties never actually explain that, like why Raiden can't get involved. You know, and my, my version would have Raiden get involved but i would have to be depower him just a little bit because you don't want him to be too powerful to the point where you know you don't want that have a nice day ending from fucking mortal kombat one and uh, johnny you know johnny cage does make a little bit of sense here when he says that 
you know, the fate of the world being decided by a karate tournament. It's like, that is kind of a good point. <laughs> yeah, the fate of the world is, is decided by, by a martial arts tournament between a bunch of random ass people. Like, that's, that is a bit strange. <laughs> Even for Mortal Kombat standards, that is strange that that's how, the, that's how we decide whether or not, you know, these invaders uh, get to take over our planet or not. Go. Hide in the jungle until it is over. And let Earth be destroyed? Sorry, pal. I took an oath to defend it, no matter the odds. I guess you can say Sonya Blade is a defender of the realm. <laughs> Come <Cow> that time! <laughs> oh, I missed that show. He would not understand, Sonya. Someone such as him has never known anything worth dying for. I do find that funny that Scorpion let Luke Kang get away with saying that shit. I was thinking like, oh, Scorpion gonna fight him now. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay, he's letting them, he's letting them slide with that. Okay. I don't know. That's, <laughs> when, that, when that music beat hit, I was like, oh, he's going to fuck him up for that. Know that the next time we meet, it will not end well. Spoiler alert, the next time they meet, it does, in fact, end well for them. I'm just saying, he really killed the vibe around here. I was just... 